Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Debating Dads podcast, brought to you by the Brolit Factory, brolitfactory.com. This is your man, Nather, here. That's my man, Josh. Hey. That's my man, Quincy. What's up? And as always, these dads got something to say. That's right. It being Ramadan, the Muslim month of fasting, and at the beginning it was Easter and Passover, not to mention other traditions around the world, we thought it'd be a good idea to talk about the role um, faith plays, and by extension, the role that it plays in our family and specifically our children's lives. Um, I used to be a former multi-faith educator. Uh, That was my thing. What that meant is that the university that I was at, I deal with students from all around the world grappling with questions of meaning, identity, faith, non-faith. What does that mean in a modern society, especially with these ancient traditions? So to get started, um, generally your faith, you know, and I put faith in quotations because that means a lot of things. um, It comes from different places and how it was taught to you will often determine your relationship to it. So for you, Josh, what were your first, what was your first relationship with faith? Um, my first relationship with faith was a very, I don't know, I would say confusing slash, um, fearful. Um, (laughs) my, uh, my dad was, uh, or is a Rastafarian, um, meaning he has his own set of beliefs. Um, not sure. Can't really go into all what they mean. Um, yeah, we used to read the Bible, or he used to read the Bible to us until we were old enough to read it ourselves, which uh, meant that um, we would be kind of trapped in the house on Sundays, meaning that means no fun, no <laughs> no noise, nothing, until uh, until he said it was okay, <laughs> or until he was done his his prayers upstairs which kind of lasted like half the day. And um, then we were, then we'd have to recite Psalms and listen to him. Do do you know any Psalms? Um, Just the 23rd Psalm. How does it go? Um, I don't know. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me besides the water. I don't know. I can't remember. It's it's there. It's kind of of in the memory, right? It's in there, yeah. It's in there, but uh, it also comes with a lot of horrible memories as well. So <laughs> it's it's something that I've tried to block out and just push away, like kind of like how I push away religion. <laughs> so interesting. So so me. so Quincy, for for example, that I mean that's a great point. So that's a one experience. What about you? Where were your earliest notions of faith formation? Well, uh, with me, um, it's more uh, of my mom. She. Uh, instilled it in us um sundays we would get ready uh you know put on your uh sunday's finest clothing you know your your fancy sunday, new sunday shoes best. you know True. yeah sunday's best yeah, so uh you know you, you get dressed like you know sharp uh, looking good and then you you know get together go to go to sunday school you know uh, my mom go, uh, would go to her service and uh, you know it, it was a pleasant it was a pleasant experience for me, you know, um, it would mostly be, uh, her sisters and, and their kids and, you know, you know, my cousins and everything We would all be in the church and, you know, it would be a fun time for us. So I, um, I never really had a bad experience with religion, you know, um, even now I would say to this day, um, usually when we have our family get togethers, uh, um, my cousin, uh, who is a, a pastor, would always uh, pray for everyone, and it would always be positive. So we kind of grew with religion, you know, in in a positive way. Don't get don't get me wrong. Like, I still have like things that religion has instilled in me, and that's made me a a better person. Like, gave me morals and gave me kind of like restrictions and boundaries. You know what I mean? Like, as much as religion has its flaws it's it has its you know benefits too i mean that 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 is a great point because i have sort of something like a hybrid has some fantastic memories growing up as a young adult muslim and then some challenging ones like some of my best memories are going with my father and my grandfather who's now deceased to friday prayers right and it was like it was like such a connection like that i've held on to with my kids 
right? Like, you know, for, for Muslims, Friday is the Sunday where you go and our reward is you get like a halal pizza slice, right? Mm. Like, you know, what's, like, what's you, included in this halal pizza slice? So they'd be like, instead delicious. of like, instead of like pork pepperoni, Muslims would have like beef pepperoni. Mm. And it's like the, slaughtered. The dry like, one? Yeah. The that, yeah, it's, it's all right. <laughs> So it's like, hey, listen, you're like, you're like, you're like 12, right? So it's great. No, I know, I know. And, and, and then at the same time, you also have memories of like being, you know, going to McDonald's and only you could eat a fish fillet because mm-hmm. that was like whatever. Or for example, or, or, or for example, I mean, it's still a good sandwich. I will say it's, it's oh, is oh, it a real fish? It's, no, it's, it's kind not. of the worst sandwich on the menu right now, bro. Like, <laughs> it's, you're right. It's, it's called these guys now, but it's yeah. also, it's also, I think part of my negativity came around it is, always feeling you were the other, particularly, I mean, now there's lots of Muslims in, let's say, the greater Toronto area, but I grew up in Pickering, Ontario, where we weren't that many. And, mm-hmm. you know, you always felt, oh, if you got to pray or like, you know, what, what, what is your faith? And you always felt like a little defensive because you weren't the dominant, right? And you know, there was also like lots of like stereotypes around you. This is even long before 9-11 sort of growing up. Uh, and, I, and I think, you know, generally, you know, take that into adulthood, you know, especially when I was like 18, my first day of university was um, 9-11. So like, there's like all sorts of political stuff with your faith and whatnot. Uh, and as a 38 year old man years later, um, there's all these wonderful memories, but there's also these these challenging things. Like I will, I will say like it's Ramadan, we're fasting right now. I've been doing this for 30 years. People are like, mm-hmm. oh my God, how could you do that? Whatever. But a lot of people will understand the sense of community you feel like when you're breaking fast with your fellow brothers and sisters and faith or you're going to the mosque. Obviously you can't do that in COVID right now, mm-hmm. but those feelings of euphoria. But then there's times in your life where you're like, man, all of this doesn't necessarily make sense to me. Is right? it and euphoria I, and I think, or is it like hunger? I mean, it could be both. Like, right? we're, we're, like, 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 we're like, sometimes you're like, I would never eat that outside or, or, of like. Or is it delirium? Like, no. just delirious you, from you know what I actually remember uh, back in the days uh, growing up in the Netherlands? Um, when uh, my friends would break fast, uh, you know, they would call it uh, like, like, you know, the, the, the parties and everything that would happen, call it Zalkut Face, like a yeah. sweet party. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> They would always bring all these goodies to, to work. I mean, uh, to school for us. And, you know, it was it was a good, you know, that, that was one memory that I have of Ramadan back in the days through my friends, right? So yeah, it, was, it was cool. It's good because it also brings to, to our next point is like, how has faith identity evolved as you grew up? Like, what parts of it do you pass on to your children? So like uh, yesterday, as an example, um, you know, my, 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 my two boys were, were fasting, right? And like, you know, they're, they're up in the morning and there's that excitement. And my daughter, who's much younger, is like, why didn't you wake me up? She doesn't keep a fast. She's too young for her, right? But there's that, there's just like passing on these traditions, which some would call like cultural or religious or whatnot, to the next generation is, it's a point of pride. However, people are going to practice it. Mm. It's still you as a parent are part of that lineage, right? And I think you're, you have grandparents in the mix and whatever. Um, I, I think it's also like out, out of respect for a lot of us have talked about that. Like your parents have instilled some certain values. And part of it is you're, you have a certain way you practice your faith and they have a certain way. But when it comes to the kids, it's like you're trying to pass on the best of all those worlds so they can yeah. make their own decisions, right? And they will have to make their own decisions. But what about you, like Josh? Like in terms of like, what do you pass down to your kids? Um, when it comes to religion, I don't pass down anything. Um, I leave that up to the schools. <laughs> um, and they I go learned to Catholic school, right? Yeah, they go to Catholic school. Like I went to Catholic school as well, and I learned about all the religions, right? So it's like you you hear about like this one and that one like their mother's like buddhist so they they have that side too right so it's like they they have so many options and so many things coming in it's just like i just let them make up their own mind like it's they're going to grow up and make a decision anyways like and then and then they'll hear what i got to say about it later <laughs> and then if they want to if they want to maintain that thought process or follow along or become like devout christians like that's totally fine too just don't be knocking on my door on sunday preaching the word of god it's like no I, no I no, no full, cir- right, no right, full yeah. circle here <laughs> and it turns right. over with none of that yeah because i'm gonna be sleeping you know? <laughs> what, 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 what about you quincy how does it how does it uh, affect the way you pass it on to your kids or not 
Well, I would say whatever I pass on will be more of a watered down version for what I received. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't go to church on Sundays. Uh, I would go, let's say, on important uh important uh days uh, like new year's or christmas uh, you know stuff like that easter maybe? but uh uh easter's Ooh, easter. yeah so easter cheese, as well yo. you know and pass that down real quick uh yeah bun and cheese my mom would would mm. get up and bake and uh you know we won't have any meat you guys uh, have the fry fish you have the fry yeah. fish fry fish maybe all that same stuff mm. that you have right so fun yes, fact cabbage? fun fact the filet fish was created to ha stop slumping sales on friday for catholics yeah like, and it was either between that and pineapple on a bun what are you talking about they just go and get fish and chips yeah, no, you know but... you know what you know you know another thing i actually remember from uh being in the netherlands as well uh, on sundays everything used to be closed Mm. All the stores so, in right, Ontario, the they Ontario, force you to the churches. In, in Ontario, it used to be the same way. There's the very famous court case where I can't remember who was actually fought to remain open on Sundays, but it used <laughs> really? to be that way here. Yeah. So, so Sundays, so you know, as a kid, as a kid growing up, Sundays, you're you're bored. You're like, why is everything closed? There's nowhere to go. There's <laughs> <laughs> only one place to go, bro. I was church. supposed to be in church. Right? Church. His family. Um, as christian uh so she is surrounded by a lot of uh 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 members of her family that uh that follow the faith like uh and uh my my son's mother um she is more of a spirit, uh, spiritual person i think she was actually uh catholic but she is more you know interested in uh buddhism and stuff like that so she uh she has her own uh spirituality that she uh passes on to him and me yeah i um i mean i don't follow anything by the book but uh my son used to uh go to uh an after school program at the church where he would learn about the bible and stuff like that and his name is also a biblical name so there, there are influences there for them my name is also biblical by the way joshua i have my own book that's right I have and, two of my own books. One and, I wrote, and, and, one and I think just wrote. your your point on like you know <laughs> like the 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 families of your exes and co-parenting, like mm. th there is that whole balance, right? And Josh, you alluded to it earlier, is that especially you know as co-parents, right? We practice notions of religion, spirituality, different versions of the same or even completely different faiths altogether, and mm -hmm. you know for your children. Um, you know, how does that sort of mix kind of work? So it's, it's really interesting that for, you know, my ex and I, like, you know, we met at a particular point in our life when we were both students in the Muslim Students Association. And we were sort of that, that ideal, naive narrative notion of Islam, right? Like, um, and I think we we're definitely both Muslims, but like, it's, I always call it like a la carte Islam, where like, what mm -hmm. may be a big deal to her now? Yeah, and I think that's like religion in the modern world generally. It's like the Mandarin. I don't know if there's an equivalent for everyone else. That like there used to be a Chinese buffet that's now closed oh, with COVID. I thought you were talking about the Mandarin Ten Rings. The Ten, no, the ten Rings. That's <laughs> that, that's gonna, that's going to be dope. But yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm talking about the Mandarin restaurant. It's like you come and you pick what you want. And it, mm. I think sometimes having conversations with my ex about like what are we instilling and how do we differ, right? Because. I think to Josh's point, you're right. The children are ultimately going to make up their decision, their minds. But I think seeing that variety can sometimes be complimentary, but sometimes it's going to be downright confusing, right? Because mm. it's like sometimes some belief systems do not like mesh they well don't, together. No, they don't, right? Mm. And, and and I think you know, for example, you know, both Islam and Christianity are monotheistic religions, as an example, meaning they believe in one God, right? Okay, thank uh, you. they believe in one God. So, <laughs> right? So like. But like other ones like Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism, they're more like Dharmic ones or like more philosophies, right? Where there isn't mm -hmm. a notion of a, of a god. And, 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 There's and more it, like idols and they pray to this well, god. Well, listen, there may be god in senses, but like, but it's not the same as, you know, as I said, the Abrahamic faith, Judaism, Islam, Christianity. Mm -hmm. Like so, and, and as, as somebody who had, came from a multi-faith background, it's like you also add into the fact you've got modern secularism. Of like no religion, right? You've got the infused in there, the right? Atheists. And, and it's just how does that kind of work? So, uh, for 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 both of us, we touched on this, but for you, Quincy specifically, um, like how do you navigate the fact that when you may be teaching your child, maybe a little bit different than 
what the mothers of, of, you know, will come back. Is that a challenge? Is that complimentary? Do you have discussions about it? Like, how does it work? Well, truthfully, I don't really think about it. You know, I just, I just pass on what I can pass on or whatever. Mm. Uh, I mean, their, their moms pass on to them. That's, you know, that's what they, that's for them to uh, absorb. Right. So, I mean, when it all comes together in their mind, that's when they decide, okay, what do I choose to keep? What do do I want to get rid of, right? So I don't really think about it. I just, you know, as long as I know that what I'm uh, giving to them is positive, you know, it will help them improve, you know, create a great, uh, help them create a, a, a decent character. You know, it, it, that's all that's important to me. Like, I don't, really, not uh, murderers, yeah. Yeah, I don't really put too much thought into what I'm, pa- what, what, what the mothers is passing on, but I'm, I'm confident that it won't be anything, anything that will be detrimental to their uh, development. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think just to add that point, like, you know, we, we also have um, the role that our parents play. We talked about how it like passes on. So like, for example, I always joke, I go, my mother is this sweet, but yet stern, conservative Pakistani mm-hmm. Muslim woman who prays five times a day. And she is especially post our split. She's very, you know, before I go into this grave, I'm going to pass on as much as I can, just like my her mom did to me, right? A mm. lot of my faith and information, so much is learned from my grandparents. My my grandfather taught me Quran, which is like the Muslim holy book, um, like Arabic recitation. like And, and it's like that. Th- those lessons are still in, instilled, those value systems. So you speak because- Arabic? I can read Arabic. A lot of Muslims, most, just here's a fun fact. Most Muslims around the world don't understand Arabic, but there's a training system where you can read it. So because the Arabic prayers are recited in Arabic and Mm. it's Quran. So we we know some of the words, but we actually don't. I can read Arabic without actually understanding. So so when someone's speaking it to you, you don't really. So, so like there's absolutely certain words like we, we go over time, but what will happen is in Islamic systems, because Arabic is the official language of the Quran, like, you know, Mm. and prayers and whatnot. They, you know, when Islam spread, it spread to all these non-Muslim lands. Mm. And so they develop like over like centuries, like these training systems where you can actually learn. And most kids like myself, like my kids, we actually learn without understanding language. There has been a push in later years, especially amongst my generation to understand it. But yeah, to perform like a prayer, you've Mm. actually got to uh, know Arabic. And so that's where like there's like growing up and this will go to your, some of like tying with your parents and some of the challenging parts of religion. We used to go to Quran class and man, those teachers mm. were strict. We did were they s- beat you? You know, uh, sometimes, it's sometimes, okay. sometimes, you You'll know, I remember, okay. I remember one time, like if you'd mess up, they put a pen between your hand and they would squeeze. Mm. And, the, and then years later, those same teachers, they're all sweet grandfathers. They never do none of that. But back in the day, you know, early eighties and nineties, it was hard. And like, and like, that's when you, that's when you get them when they're older. Yeah. Like, remember me? <laughs> no, but, but you, know, you know what it is, is that it's part of, for a lot of our, our parents, they, you know, they came to, at least, let's say from a Muslim background, they came to Canada in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and they're like, if we don't protect this faith tradition, make, let's say, mm. the Eid, the, the Muslim um, prayer celebration after Ramadan, the fasting, or if we don't make these traditions important for the kids, they will be gone. Yeah, and this, like, a, 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 anthropologically, which is a field of study, it's like it's very common in academic research to look at as like when diasporas, like when people immigrate from one country to the next, they want to hold on to what they 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 came with. You know, in fact, some people become more religious when they leave a Muslim country. They were like, because mm. you took it for granted, then, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, you yeah. took it for granted, and now here you're like, oh my god, if I don't build a mosque. There's gonna be no, like there's gonna be no there's mosque. gonna be no mosque there's gonna be here. no mosque here, right there's gonna be no mosque here so if you just, build it they will come so so just to that point like Josh like uh you know uh, do 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 your parents have any role in like faith formation in the children no um my dad's not around anymore and uh, my mom's not really too religious so um no again up to that um, you know Catholic school board. It's just uh, it's still and, and, they, and, and I think I think it's I think, still I, right now. I, and think, then, I, I think I think it is fascinating because but 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 one thing before you continue, one thing I'm actually very proud of is that my kids are actually questioning the religion. And it was very it was a very proud moment for me. It's like 
he, it was, I can't remember exactly what it was, but he questioned something like, if this is this, then how does this make sense? And I was like, ask your teacher. <laughs> it, you know, it, it, it's a great point, and I'll add a point, but I want to hear from you, Quincy, like in terms of like the role that your parents play, like in the faith formation of your children. Well, my kids are surrounded by a lot of, uh, you know, Chris, uh, Christian uh, Christianity. Christianity and uh, my daughter goes to a Catholic school. Um, so, uh, you know, they, they get it from, you know, from all, all sides, you know, they, uh, there's a lot of influence around them. So, um, yeah, um, me, uh, me per se, I don't really preach anything to them. Um, I, I, I don't pray often myself, you know, but, uh, you know, usually when I do pray, I, I pray for others. You know, but yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't yep. really. I don't really sit them down and and, and uh, discuss religion with them, right? Um, yeah. So, I got a question though. Go ahead. Why isn't there a Christian school? Why is there any Catholic schools? Oh, so this is simple. Fun fact: in Ontario, the reason is in Ontario at the time the public school system was effectively the Protestant system because there was more Protestants than Catholics. That's good so, to know. So they actually had to create a separate Catholic system for the minority who were in Catholics. In Quebec, it was the opposite. So then, but then obviously as it grew over time in Ontario, you have more diverse populations in the public system. And a lot of people have even said like, we want to have like funding for Muslim schools or other schools or whatever. And it's not fair that you have it for Catholic schools. That's just the legacy system in Ontario. So mm -hmm. it, it is interesting that we are in a secular post Christian society, but so many of those things, especially with Christianity are tied in like Easter's a holiday at, at one point Sunday. Everything is influenced by uh, Christianity. Is, but, the yeah. whole damn world is influenced by well, especially in this part, especially in this part of the world, and Laws. and and, and I, I think I think you're right. Is that irrespective of what people practice um, or not, you can't deny religion's influence in the world, mm -hmm. even up to mm -hmm. right now. Like yeah. a, as you said, Josh, like you're a very critical reasoner around religion. But then when yeah. you watch those uh, those shows like uh, the Viking and stuff like that, you see yeah. how they had. Um... The, the English going around trying to spread Christianity now, yeah. right? So yeah, they're, they're holy wars. Yeah, they had a lot of holy wars. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Damn Templars they, they, they tried to everybody. make that the main religion in the world, right? Mm. And, and, and even, even today, it's like, you know, whether it's something like Islamophobia or anti-Semitism or like extreme right-wing radicalism, like, like a lot of people will use religion as that tool so like you know and, and a lot of people are like back to the children a lot of people like in our community in the muslim community like there was this huge push amongst muslim families to like check in like post 9 11 on like to make sure like young adult muslim men weren't being radicalized right Shit. because it, it because it's like it, and that shadow still the cast of paul even 20 years later where you're like you're always trying to to make sure that like the understanding of the faith is in congruence with the society you live in because it's true any religion but i'm talking specifically from my faith background can be used you can grab a passage there and you can be like oh my god i'm gonna i'm gonna do this and that passage was been 1400 years ago you have no scholarly expertise on it yeah. you're just reading <laughs> it and it was like and you're like how does it apply in in, in i spent some time with christians theologians and there's something called exegesis which is how do you take something from the bible Mm -hmm. and bring it to the world you live in how you literally pull it away and when you're reading stuff about like stoning or beheading or chastity and stuff like that like a lot of people in the western chastity like, belts yeah Just imagine lot, what a, those a, smell a, like. a, lot, a, a lot of people in the world are like are like i don't know how that fits with my modern milieu and i think for us to pass it to the kids when just josh to your point is like when your child will ask you something about religion that you yourself have a critical question with yeah it, it, you know it, 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 you sometimes just it's not good enough for a youtube generation to pass it off and be like yeah yeah just trust god like you have like you know like like yeah. the, the, like, like you believe people, well we're educating our children in, in modern ways and they're getting influences from around the world so these questions like if religion's a box then you are going to get these questions so rather than in, in at least in my opinion um and it'll bring us to our next point is 
you can't hide from worldviews. You have to engage them. So, exactly. so my question is here is, do you want your children to have your faith system when they grew up, when they go up? Option A is yes, absolutely. Option B is no, they are free to decide. Option C is I'd like them to have some aspect of my faith value system. I'll go first. So for me, it would be yes, absolutely. And I'll tell you where that, where that comes from is that, you know, post 9-11, it was so hard to be Muslim. And, you know, having these kids with these Muslim names, it is maybe a little bit selfish. And they're going to have to decide what kind of Muslims they want to be if they want to be at all. Right. But I will say that we did have to fight to form that identity. So part of me is like, if you're going to really understand it, understand it for who you are, but at least understand that there were struggles to even exist as, as we are like the, all the stuff you take for granted right now, wasn't here, you know, just out of, out of the blue people built that around you. What about you, Josh? Um, as you probably taken it from so far from what I've been saying, like I, I'm a firm believer in people making their own decisions, but even with that said, like there is things you can use and instill your children with like from religion that can keep them like grounded slash like out of jail. Or... They go with option C. Yeah. So it's like a little B and C. Like I like yeah. I don't need like I guess that my my faith system as in like take what you want from it and use it to better yourself. Like, don't just follow word for word. This is what it says. This is what I have to do because like that doesn't, then then you're just a lemming. You know what I mean? You're just following the crowd. Don't follow blindly is what you're saying. Yeah. Open your eyes. Ask some questions. What what about you, Quincy? Um, I would go with C as well. Um, I would say that, me myself, I'm not a I'm not a, a diehard Christian, right? So I can't expect my kids to be that way. I mean, so if they choose to follow it like to the T, that's up to them. And uh, I mean, the Bible uh, was written by a man, so who knows what how much he has changed of the of it, right? Like, who knows what's was there before and what wasn't, right? We don't, right? All we all we know is this is a book that we're supposed to learn from, mm-hmm. but who knows uh, what the uh, you know what the agenda was of the of the author of the Bible? You have no idea. Well, so wasn't, it a couple, wasn't it a few people? It's a few people because right? <laughs> there's a book of this, a book of that, and yeah. this guy's. And, and, but, and, 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 and that and that is a fantastic point, right? And mm-hmm. I think one of the interesting points about us three being these dads who are friends who come from different vantage points is we inform each other's opinions right mm-hmm. and i think that is something that maybe when traditional religion wasn't was revealed quote unquote mm-hmm. you know i don't know if it had modern day toronto slash canada in its mix nah, of, right like right nah. and, and, and 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 i think that is the interesting thing that i've learned from the two of you is that like a lot of my worldview sometimes have been complimented but sometimes challenged right and mm-hmm. and i think and vice versa there's that word again, spicy, is that spicy. is that that exchange of ideas is what a good society is built on. That's yeah. how you get from like not just one group to me taking over society with their systems. Like, yeah. Right. right? Like, and I, and I think that is Templaring it up. Yeah. And, and, and I think <laughs> that, but, but, that's an interesting and another thing I wanted to say, it's like they, they, there are um, uh, we call it uh, tablets or whatever with ancient scripture on it, right? That has been translated over time, right? But like what the translation is, you know, who really knows, right? Just some, who knows? It's, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's like when you look at like the Egyptian um, hieroglyphics, script, like hieroglyphics, hieroglyphics and yeah. stuff. It's just like, oh, um, this means that. Like who told you that? Like, But they, you know what? This? They also said that the hieroglyphics show that there was another species that came from above. There you go, but no one teaches, believes in that shit. To teach us civilization. But, but everyone that believes in aliens is some crazy conspiracy theorist. Because, I mean, what if religion is an allegory, right? A, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of people say that, and I think as a way to conclude our session today, that's why it's called faith, right? Mm-hmm. Because at some point, you have to make 
that leap because I think especially as a rational person, my grandfather said this to me once. He goes, if you keep questioning faith and faith and faith and faith, eventually you're just going to slide right off. Oh, and, 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 I was told and, that by a, by a Muslim, actually. Yeah, and, and, so, and, and listen. And listen See, this, because, is, this is the, the rebuttal. And, and, this is, and this is this is the debate that's going <laughs> to continue on into the world forever, right? And it, mm-hmm. it, it existed when faith was revealed. Mm-hmm. And it exists, it'll exist now and it'll exist in the future. But the, 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 the cool part about this is, you know, like in terms of secularization theory, which said religion was going away, arguably that's been debunked. It's actually still here. It's stronger. stronger it's there. It's not and, going but, but, but so, so is modernity. now everyone so needs modern- some, something to believe in. Yeah. But he needs hope. In, we got to hope, hope for something. Spe- especially, especially in the yeah. world. So as, as a, you know, as a, as a, as a final, as a final sort of like uh, thought for like the, the day, it's, it's, um, uh, I'll pass it to you two to give a, us a final thought. Josh first, what's your final thought on faith? Don't be a lemming. Quincy? Final thought on faith. Well, uh, I know uh, we, we've talked about this, uh, some things in the, in the, in the past, especially uh, Josh, yeah, I remember you mentioned uh, being God fearing, right? No, oh. something that we, uh, we that we spoke about. Well, yeah, I uh, I would say someone that teaches you to fear God is uh, more trying to exert control over you, mm. whereas having faith in God, you know, it's more a liberation of the mind. You know, uh, God is a forgiving God. God is a loving God. And mm-hmm. that's more of a positive point of view that you can also be thought by, by you know, by people that believe in uh, in the religion. So, um, you know, there are good things to take away from it. You know, uh, don't turn a blind eye to it and be respect uh, respectful to others that, you know, have their beliefs. You know, ev- yeah. everybody uh, have their own opinion on, on life and, uh, you know. We should just all be respectful towards one another. Well, in in that in that same that same thought, like uh, if someone's coming and forcing it on me or banging on my door, or telling me mm-hmm. that I'm going to hell yeah. because I'm not doing what they're doing, is that respecting me? That's not respecting you. That's not respecting me at all. It's it's that it's that balance on freedom of religion and freedom from mm-hmm. religion. That's sort of a mm-hmm. like a good society mm-hmm. you'd hope is built on, right? Is that yeah. you have your right to your faith. Yeah. But you also don't have your right to force it down my throat. Exactly. Right. Right. Like and, and, and I and just and come and say, hey, check this out. And then I were to like, oh, this is cool. Where are you guys going? Can I come to your church? Then OK. But like, don't don't just. Yeah. Forcing force it, it, forcing it on others is more likely to turn them away. Exactly. Right? Well, yeah, and, yeah, and, and, what and, and and just like us, the, the conversation will continue because with new immigrants to Canada, with the diverse populations, this question is one that Canadian society will be grappling with for a long time. So this is the Debating Dads. I'm your man, Adder. That's my man, Quincy. That's my man, Josh. Right back at you. And we'll see everyone next time.